Hey guys, I hope you're having a wonderful day. Uh, please make sure you're filling in your notes organizer as I go through the PowerPoint today. Today's topic is going to be the Kingdom Plante, and we're going to cover uh, topics such as evolution, structures, and adaptations. Okay, so just general characteristics of plants. What makes a plant a plant? All plants are eukaryotic, multicellular, autotrophic, made up of specialized tissues and organs, and able to absorb nutrients through roots or root light structures called rhizoids. In addition to this, we also know that there are some key uh, cell structures that are unique to plants or important in plant cells, and we'll get to those closer to the end. Okay, so there's a great deal of evidence that supports the idea that plants and algae, which of course are plant-like protists, share a common ancestor. Okay, so what is some of that evidence? Some of that evidence is that they both have cell walls made of cellulose. Cell division includes the formation of a cell plate. We learned about that last semester. The chlorophyll pigment is used during photosynthesis. That's the stuff that traps the sunlight. And then food is stored as starch. The main difference between plants and plant-like protists is that plant-like protists, or algae, require a full-time source of moisture. I love Miss Koster. So how did, in the world did we get from algae to plants? Here's the big picture idea that I need you to understand, and, and this is number three on your notes organizer. We got from algae to non-vascular plants to vascular seeded, seedless plants to seeded vascular plants. And we're going to break seeded vas vascular plants into two separate categories. So we got from algae to non-vascular plants to vascular seedless plants to gymnosperms and then to angiosperms. Or if you want to just use the examples, we got from algae to mosses to ferns to gymnosperms and then to angiosperms. So let's break this down. Our very first true plants were non-vascular plants. And non-vascular just means that they didn't have any specialized tissues for transporting materials up and down through the plant. So they were very small, they grew in damp, shady areas, they required more moisture than other plants, um, they did not have true roots, and of course we don't have seeds yet, so how did they reproduce? They utilized spores. So non-vascular plants were our first plants to evolve. And our examples of non-vascular plants are usually mosses and liverworts, mosses probably being the one you're more familiar with. Okay, mosses and liverworts, they don't have true roots, but they produce these root-like structures called rhizoids. This anchors them to the soil or, or whatever surface they're growing on, and it allows water and minerals to simply diffuse. It doesn't... Uh, transport nutrients like we're about to learn in vascular tissues. It's just simple osmosis and diffusion through these rhizoids. So non-vascular plants, mosses and liverworts, are the most primitive or the most ancient of the land plants. Okay, so now that we have non-vascular plants, the next thing to evolve were vascular tissues. So over time, plant, plants evolve specialized vascular tissues. And a vascular tissue is basically the plumbing system of a plant. It's these special tunnels and tissues that allow water and materials to travel throughout the plant. So they carry water and dissolve substances throughout the plant, which allows for faster movement of materials, which allows roots to grow deeper for more water, which means that they can provide structure and to support a plant, and that the plant can grow bigger. So vascular plants are going to be bigger than non-vascular plants. So what are our vascular tissues? You have two types of vascular tissues, and that's xylem and phloem. Cool, right? Cool words. And there's a phrase I want you to remember. Xylem up, phloem them down. And if you can remember that phrase, then you can remember what they transport. So xylem up. What travels up in a plant from the roots? What do roots take in? Uh, the root's job is to take in water. So xylem up is moving water up through the plant. Flow them down. So think what flows down from the leaves of a plant. Well, leaves are green because they have got chloroplasts that has chlorophyll. And what's happening in chloroplasts? That's photosynthesis. So what's the point of photosynthesis? The point of photosynthesis is to make glucose. So what's moving down from the leaves? That glucose, those sugars. So xylem up. We're moving. Xylem moves water up through the plant. Flow them down, that moves sugars or glucose down through the plant. So this vascular tissue, xylem and phloem, allow a plant to be able to get nutrients to wherever it's needed very quickly. It's a much more specialized system. Okay, so continuing on, 
We had non-vascular plants that didn't have xylem and phloem. Now we've got vascular plants, but our first vascular plants to evolve were seedless. They still didn't reproduce with seeds. So they have vascular tissue, they have xylem and phloem, they have true roots now, but they don't have seeds, so that means they still reproduce with spores. The most well-known seedless vascular plants, the one you're, you're probably most familiar with are ferns, but there's also club mosses and horsetails. So here's some pictures of that. And if you actually take a fern, which you've seen before, you know, Georgians love having ferns on there and potted plants on their porches. If you take a leaf of a fern and you flip it over, you actually see these little spore sacs. And if you broke one of those open, they'd be filled with, you know, thousands of spores. Okay. So next came, we, we still have vascular tissue, but next came the evolution of the seed. So what's the benefit of a seed? And this is under number seven on your notes organizer. Draw this picture here. Seeds allow plants to grow on true dry ground. The development of seeds meant that we really could live on dry land full time. So why is that? In the seed, you have an embryo. That's what's going to grow into the new plant. And you have nutrients, so that embryo is, can sort of be fed while it's still in the seed. And then you've got this protective coat. So the embryo is being protected by this covering, unlike a spore. It's, it doesn't quite have that same structure. And another benefit of, of seeds is that they're fairly lightweight, so they can be dispersed in many ways. They can be carried by wind, they can be carried by water, they can be carried by animals. By being able to disperse a seed, this limits the competition between the parent and the offspring. If the offspring is growing further away, then that means it's not competing for the same nutrients, the same sunlight as the parent plant. So you, this is stuff you already know. You know that there are tons of ways that seeds can be dispersed. We've got these little seeds that grow on maples. They come down like helicopters. We've got dandelion seeds that are so lightweight, they just float off in the breeze. We've got these burrs that can stick to your socks and stick to the fur of animals, and that's how they're dispersed. <clears throat> You've got other seeds that are going to be, you know, they're going to be the food of certain animals, and then when they ingest them and poop them out somewhere else, that disperses them. Then you've got seeds like coconuts. That's a seed for a palm tree. They can float on water, taking them to, you know, faraway islands. So what was our first seeded vascular plant? Those were gymnosperms. Remember the word I want you to think of when you hear gymnosperms, that is cones. Gymnosperm literally means naked seeds. Why are they naked? Because they're just being carried on cones. They're not really protected in any way. So here are some examples of gymnosperms. The ones you're most familiar with are the conifers, like the pines and the firs and the spruces. But we've also got these weird plants called neophytes, cycads, and ginkgos you may or may not have heard of. Okay, these are all gymnosperms. They're seeded vascular plants that carry their seeds in cones. Okay, next up came the evolution of flowers. So angiosperms, when you hear that word, I want you to think of flowers. These were the last seeded vascular plants to evolve, and their adaptations allow them to live well in terrestrial and aquatic environments. They make up more than 75% of the plant kingdom. When you think of plants, you probably think of angiosperms because most plants are angiosperms. They produce flowers. Okay, so why flowers? What's the benefit of flowers? Well, seeds aren't naked anymore. Remember, at gymnosperms, they had naked seeds in cones. Seeds are now uh, produced in flowers. So the ovary of a flower becomes the fruit. The ovary has the eggs, so when the eggs get fertilized, they become seeds, and the ovary becomes a fruit. So the fruit is surrounding the seed and protecting the seed and allowing it to be dispersed because it's you know, carried or eaten by animals. And then, of course, the other benefit of flowers is that they smell good and they look pretty. And because they smell good and they look pretty, it allows them to attract pollinators. If they attract pollinators, then it's more likely that their pollen, which is the, you know, the, the sperm cell of a plant, the male reproductive part, is going to get carried elsewhere, meaning their chances of survival and reproduction are going to increase. Okay, so here's some angiosperms attracting pollinators, you know, because of their smells or because of their colors. We've got birds, insects, bats. All of those carry pollen. Okay, so here is the structure of a flower, and we're going to dissect one of these in class so you'll learn these parts a little bit better. But flowers have male parts and they have female parts. The male part is the stamen. That should be very easy for you to remember. Male, stamen. Men, male, get it? So the stamen is made up of two parts, the filament and the anther. 
the female portion of the flower is the pistil. And you can just remember, you know, like, that girl is as fiery as a pistil. So the female part, that's the pistil. That's made up of three parts, the stigma, the style, and the ovary. So pause on this picture, um, draw the structures, label the structures, and don't forget inside that ovary is where you're going to find the ovules or the egg. So when the pollen lands on the stigma and makes its way down the style, it's going to make its way to the ovary where it's going to fertilize the ovules, the eggs. That's what's going to become seeds and eventually that ovary will become a fruit around the seeds. Okay, so what are the now just sort of backing up for the big picture, what are the main structures of, of plants and what are their functions? So the main structures you're going to be responsible for knowing are leaves, flowers, and then more specifically the seeds and the fruit, and the stems and the roots. So let's just run through this real fast. The, per the function of a flower is it contains the reproductive parts which produce seeds after pollination. The purpose of a leaf is to make food through the process of photosynthesis. This is where you have all your chloroplasts, all your chlorophyll, that's why they're green. The function of a stem is that it carries food and water around the plant. This is where you're going to find the xylem and the phloem, moving the materials up and down. And it also helps the plant to stay upright. It provides structure to the plant. Okay, then you have roots, which are responsible for absorbing water and minerals from the soil. And then they, of course, help to anchor the plant. And then on those roots, you're going to find root hairs, which increase the surface area so that they can absorb more water and minerals from the soil. Remember the seeds, that's going to grow into new plants, and the fruit are produced from the ovary and they protect the seeds. Okay, last on the list are the major plant cell structures. We know that there are structures that plant cells have that other cells don't have. The ones uh, that you're going to be responsible for knowing are the vacuole, which is that large central organelle that's used for storing water. The cell wall, which if you remember is made of cellulose. You can jot that down. And then the chloroplast, which is where photosynthesis happens. So those are the three big cell structures for plant cells. The chloroplast, where photosynthesis happens, the large central vacuole, which stores water, and the cell wall made of cellulose. Of course, this is a eukaryotic cell. We've got all these major membrane-bound organelles, and we have a nucleus. And that concludes our video lecture on plants. Um, fill in number 13 and number 14 using your notes organizer. You already have that information. It's just a way to you know, organize it in a nice visual, easy format. So number 13 on the evolution of plants and number 14 on the uh, compare and contrast gymnosperms and angiosperms. I hope you are having a great day and just know that I really enjoy having you as my student.